All right, welcome to a more exotic way of solving simultaneous linear equations. Here they are, 2x minus y equals 18, 3x plus y equals 2. You look at that and go, oh, very straightforward. And there's a whole bunch of ways in which you already know how to solve this. But I'm going to introduce you to something brand new called the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Wow, what is that? Well, it's a very clever way of solving linear equations. And in this case, since we only have two equations, x and y, and two, um, two variables, I'm, no, I'm sorry, two equations, two variables, you, uh, you probably don't need to use that method. However, what if you have three equations and three unknowns, or four equations and four unknowns, or 18 equations and 18 unknowns? That's a really good method to use, and most of the time when they get to be that complicated, they use computer programming to solve the equation. But at least here you're going to learn the methodology by taking a simple case where you have two equations and two unknowns. So the way the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination works is you draw something that looks kind of like a determinant. You place within these two lines the coefficients on the x and the y variables. So we have a 2, a minus 1, a 3, and a 1. And then you draw a dashed line here, and to the right of the dashed line, you put in the constants 18 and 2. And I probably got a little bit um, carried away, made it a lot bigger than it needed to be, so let me make it a little bit smaller, like so. There we go. Now, the whole idea is you're going to go through a set of steps, a set of operations, in such a way that at the very end, when you're all done, you end up with something that looks like 1, 0, 0, 1. Oop, no, not like that. <laughs> it looks like this. So you end up with a 1 across the diagonal, 0 in the other direction, and then the value for x and y will be over here. You can actually, when you get to this stage, read the actual solutions, the two numbers representing the x and the y coordinate of the points where the two lines cross. So the question is, how do you go from here to here. Well, you go do it in a very systematic way. You go to each number first and change it to the form that you want. You start with the upper left corner right here and you want to make this number look like this. In other words, you want to make the 2 into a 1. And whatever you do, you have to do the same thing to the entire row, to all three numbers in that row. So to make a 2 into a 1, have to take the very first row and divide it by 2 because then the 2 will then turn into a 1. So I'm going to take the first row, row 1, and change it to half of row 1 or replace it by half the original row. In other words, I'm going to take every number and simply dividing it by 2. When I do that, I get the following thing. I don't do anything to the second row, so that stays as a 3, a 1, and a 2, but I take the 2 divided by 2, I get 1. I take the negative 1 divided by 2, I get a negative 1 half. I take the 18 divided by 2, and I get a 9. So, I'm part way there. I turn the 2 into a 1, and I have what I need in that particular location. The next thing I want to do is turn the 3 into a 0. How do I do that? Well, the technique is you take the second row and replace it by the negative this number multiply times the first row. So I take the negative of this number, negative 3, times the first row and add it to the second row. And I do that for each one of the three numbers. So negative 3 times a 1 is negative 3, added to 3, I get 0. So nothing happens to the first row. So I can rewrite this one as is. So I take negative 3 times a 1, that's negative 3, added to 3, I get 0. Negative 3 times a negative 1 half, that's a positive 3 halves added to 1, which is 2 halves, that gives me 5 halves. A negative 3 times a 9 is negative 27, added to 2 gives me a negative 25. I'm halfway there now, because now I turned this number into a 0. So I have the very first column as a 1 and a 0. In case you didn't quite get how that worked, let's do it again. I want to take a 3 and turn it into a 0. The technique we use is we take the negative of this number, multiply times the first row, where the 1 is, so negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, add it to this number, and we get a 0. 
But since I did it to the first one, I need to do it to the second and the third number as well. So I take negative 3 times the number in the first row. Negative 3 times a half is a positive 3 halves. Plus 1 is a positive 5 halves, and I put it there. For the third number, it's negative 3 times a 9, which is a negative 27. Add it to 2, negative 27, plus 2 is a negative 25, and I'm done. All right, the next step is I want to get this number to be a 1. So I move over to the second column. I go to where I need a 1, and that's in this location right here. I want to turn this number into a 1. I can do that by multiplying this by its reciprocal. If I multiply this by 2 fifths, this will turn into a 1. Of course, if I multiply this by 2 fifths, I have to multiply this by 2 fifths. So the technique is take the second row and replace it by 2 fifths the second row. But in other words, I'm multiplying the second row by 2 fifths. If I do that, I get the following. Notice since I'm only changing the second row, nothing changes in the first row. So this stays as a 1, a negative 1 half, a positive 9. But here in the second row, of course, the 0 doesn't change because I can do anything to 0. It stays as a 0. Multiplying this by 2 fifths, that becomes a 1. And multiplying this by 2 fifths, well, 25 divided by 5 is 5 times 2 is 10. And since it's negative, this becomes a negative 10. I'm almost there. Notice that these three numbers now look like these three numbers over here. The only thing left is I have to take this and turn it into a zero. So to do that, I take the first row and replace it by the negative of this number, which is a positive one half, times the row that has the one in it, which is row two, and I add it to the row that I'm changing, row one. Of course, I have to do that to every number in uh, the first row. So, what happens? I'm not changing the second row at all, so that stays at 0, 1, and minus 10. If I do this to the first one, notice nothing changes. If I take 1 half times row 2, that's 1 half times 0, and add it to the first one, the 1 doesn't change, and that's the technique is designed to do that, not to change what already accomplished. But notice for this number right here, if I take 1 half times the second row, which is 1 half times 1, gives me 1 half, I add it to the negative 1 half, that cancels out and gives me 0. Of course, I have to do it to the next row as well, or the next column. And so 1 half times 10, or negative 10, that would be minus 5, added to positive 9 gives me positive 4. And I'm done. I now have this looking exactly like that. One's across the diagonal, two is everywhere else, and those are the two numbers representing the solution, the x and the y coordinate of the point where the two lines cross. So my solution is 4 and negative 10. And just to make sure we did this correctly, let's plug those numbers back into two equations. So starting, we're going to check. And starting with the first equation, I have 2x minus y equals 18. Plugging in a 4 for x and a negative 10 for y. 2 times 4 minus 10 equals 18. Oh, I almost made a mistake in my check. y is a negative 10, so I subtract a negative 10 equals 18. See, I realized that they weren't going to add up to the same number, so something was wrong here. So this gives me 8 plus 10 equals 18, or 18 is equals 18, and that's correct. Doing the same with the second equation, I have 3x plus y equals 2. Plugging in a 4 for x and a negative 10 for y, so 3 times 4 plus a negative 10 equals 2. That's 12 minus 10 equals 2, and yes, indeed, that's correct. So there's the interesting method of the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination, or elimination method, to solve for the x and y value of the point where the two lines cross.